Hey, VC, how's it going? Right, okay, this is a, a Gimme 10 male and female duos. Yeah, so this is a response video to James Griffiths who uploaded a video a couple of days ago where he showed 10 duet records. Um, yeah, so mine are all soul related, so I just thought I'd, I'd show you what I thought about it. So, right, so first up, this is Donny Hathaway and Roberta Flack, their album, I think this is from 72, isn't it? Yeah, on Atlantic Records. Now, for me, male and female duets don't get any better than Donny Hathaway and uh, Roberta Flack. Their voices complemented each other absolutely perfectly. I love all of the music they made together and individually throughout the 1970s. Just beautiful records. I mean, they were recording at the time of his death, actually. Um, I think it was around the time of uh, the session for Back Together Again, the uh, Roberta Flack album that came out about 1980, didn't it? Um, and I, I say that's when Donny Hathaway passed away. But yeah, this record, absolutely gorgeous. I actually bought it about 20 years ago. And when I first heard it, I was a little bit disappointed. I think at that stage, I was looking for something a little bit funkier. But um, when I picked it up and spun it again, a few years later, it absolutely blew me away. So yeah, there's my first choice. Right, second choice. This is Jimmy and Vela Cameron. This is on Atlantic Records, also from 1972. Um, yeah, so when I bought this record, I didn't know anything about it. I bought it on the back of the cover, basically, just on the strength of the cover. I love that image. Um, and in truth, most of the album isn't to my taste. It's, it's very much a, well, like a, um, a singer-songwriter record. But there is one, one track on here. Um, the first track on side two, Chicka Boom, which is it's an out-and-out -out funk tune. So I'll do an little drop on that. <laughs> Ashford and Simpson, now this is their album Send It, I think from 1979, 80, something like that. But yeah, I love all the records that they made together throughout the 70s. I mean, late 60s, early 70s, they were probably the, the main um, songwriting partnership for Motown Records. They wrote for the likes of Marvin Gaye and Tam Tammy Terrell, they wrote for Dinah Ross, but all of their records that they made together, say throughout the 70s, are absolutely excellent. Now, uh, I picked up a few of their records, you know, several years ago now at a, at a record fair. And when I'm at a record fair, I always try and get chatting to, um, you know, the sellers. You never know what you might find out. There might have the stuff behind the store, that sort of stuff. But um, I tried chatting to this guy and he, he was giving nothing back. He wasn't interested, which was fair enough. But as soon as I pulled out a couple of Ashford and Simpson records, he got a little, a little bit misty eyed, you know, started welling up. You could see that he was drifting off miles away. And he started telling me about um, seeing them play in a... Um, in a hotel in Birmingham in the UK. And it could have been too long before um, Nick Ashford passed away. Um, but he was just basically saying that they're incredible. Everybody expected them to be turned up to sing to a backing track. They were there with a full on soul band. And he said it was just full of, you know, middle aged men with tears in their eyes, you know. So, but that's what, yeah. And I, and I can see that, you know, it makes me feel that way as well. So there you go. Right, okay. Now, um, James showed uh, uh, Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell record. I don't think anybody would, would argue with that choice. I mean, they, they had such a chemistry, the two of them. But I really like this album that you made with Kim Weston for Motown. Um, yeah, as I say, you know, the, the, the song choice of interest, obviously their big hit was It Takes Two. But I really like, like their version of Baby I Need You Loving, which uh, was obviously a hit for the Four Tops. And I'll perhaps um, provide a sample of that as well. <laughs>
Right, okay, this is a, this is an interesting one. This is Curtis Mayfield and Linda Clifford. Now, Linda Clifford re recorded for Curtis's Curtum label in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, but they made this album together. It's not great, it's very average. But they do a lovely version of Ain't No Love Lost, which is an old Curtis tune, which they re-recorded. And I think, uh, I think it's worth picking up the album for that particular tune. Right, okay, a, a husband and wife uh, duo here. This is uh, George, McRae, George McRae and Gwen McRae. Um, the album's called Together from 1975 on Cat Records. Now, obviously, indiv individually, they had, big, they had big singles in their own right. They had big records. But this is a really nice duo album. Tracks on here such as uh, Winners Together or Losers Apart and the song The Rub are definitely worth seeking out. And this is a cheap record as well. So, yeah, worth having a look for. Don't you think it's about time that we stop playing games? I mean, we both know each other like the back of our hands. And the answer is so simple. So why don't you listen? Just for once. Listen. We can. Another husband and wife duo. This is Love Wars by Womack and Womack. Um, Cecil Womack, of course, was um, the brother of Bobby Womack. Um, Linda Womack, incidentally, was the daughter of Sam Cook, which makes for a, an interesting Christmas because Bobby Womack married um, Sam Cook's widow not long after Sam Cook passed away, actually. I think it was only three or four months. Um, so you've got Cecil, um, sorry, um, Cecil Womack married to Sam Cooke's daughter, Bobby Womack married to Sam Cooke's widow, but there you go. But Love Wars, of course, an absolute classic. Right, next up, Ike and Tina Turner. Now, I know that James showed their um, Nutbush City Limits album, so I could have picked any of their records from about the 60s into the early 70s. I think that um, of all those sort of classic R&B artists, I mean, we all know what a wonderful live act Ike and Tina Turner were with the Ikeettes. But I think that Tina Turner, more so than any other artist, gets that that power, that intensity over uh, of the music over to record, which uh, I say a lot of them didn't quite manage. You know, great live acts, but didn't necessarily translate to uh, to record. Whereas t the Ike and Tina Turner records, her vocal just sells it. You know, absolutely incredible, a wonderful performer as well, as we all know. But this album is from 1971, 72, I think. It's on Liberty. The reason why I picked it is because of the, their version of the track, Funky Than a Mosquito's Tweeter, which is just absolutely killer. <laughs> Your rap, your story's getting dusty. Wash out your mouth, your lies are getting rusty. I can't believe nothing you say. Cause I'm around and I see what you do. You know you fuck it up and I'm mosquito a sweeter. You got a mouth like a head of a weaver. Same old game, you never change. Always rapping about the same. And I'm going to cheat a little bit because I'm going to show a couple of 12 inches because it uh, just gives me an excuse to show them, really. So this is Diana Brown and Barry Sharp. And this is a track, The Master Plan. This came out in 1989. And for me, it's just an acid jazz classic. Um, yeah, if I can, I might do a needle drop on this. But yeah, absolutely wonderful stuff. I really like that era of uh, the, the whole acid jazz sound from the, from the late 80s into the early 90s. And for me, this is one of the best tunes. And finally... Yeah, this is Yarborough and Peoples. This came out in 1980 in the track Don't Stop the Music. This obviously came out on Mercury Records. Um, now, for whatever reason, I've always loved this song. It's a song I've never, ever got tired of hearing. Uh, I think it's an absolutely, you know, it's a it's just a classic funk boogie tune from that sort of period. 
say, never got tired of it. For some reason, I've never sought out the album. Perhaps I should do that. I know the, the album came out around the same sort of time, but not something I ever see over here, but I'm pretty sure it'd be pretty cheap anyway. But, but yep, yeah, so that's my 10. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.